Next, this next one is probably the most shocking thing I've learned about PowerPoint presentations. Mm. What's wrong with this? All the bullet points are the same. Yeah. Well, they're different, the actually. actually. Oh. You couldn't tell because the font's it's too small. small. But still, it's not no. a complete thought at all. How about the fact that there's three points. levels of PowerPoint on there? Right. There are three levels of bullet points. Bullet points. Mm. Usually, you only have two. Yeah. Two or less. Yeah. The point is, is PowerPoint. <laughs> guys, bullet points have blown my mind. I think in bullet points almost. The way that I process is in bullet points. So when I was studying this, I was shocked by the things I found about bullet points. So here's some of the best pieces of advice I found is use only two levels of bullet points if you can. None of this three level thing. Have no more than five bullet points per slide. It's just too much information to process if you don't. And last, avoid bullets if you can. Hmm. This is the one that shocked me, okay? So here's a, here's a quote. New research into cognitive functioning, how the brain works, proves that bullet points are the least effective way to deliver important hmm. information. Wow. New research into cognitive functioning, how the brain works, proves that bullet points are the least effective way to deliver important information. Designer Gary Reynolds calls these, oh yeah, this guy, I love it. He, he, put the, he created a word, he calls them sliguments, where people try to merge documents onto slides and then they have all these bullet, bullet yeah. points, he calls them sliguments. <laughs> so don't do that. And then here's a quote that just, I, it's so true and you're going to know that it's true as soon as you hear it, okay? We've been trained since our youth to replace paying attention with taking notes. Mm. That's a shame. Your actions should demand attention. Hint, bullets demand note taking. Mm -hmm. The minute you put bullets on the screen, you are announcing, write this down, but don't really pay attention to it now. Mm -hmm. Write this down, but don't pay attention to it now. I'm torn on this because we're teachers and sometimes it's a really effective way for them to get information and to write it down and yeah they can use it later for whatever they're doing but one of the biggest problems with PowerPoint presentations is that people no longer have dialogues with people they have dialogues with their screen and mm -hmm. if you're trying to have people have dialogues with you and all of a sudden all they're doing is writing things down, they're not even paying attention to what they're writing down, but they can't focus on you either, you've got a problem. That's what goes to what you're putting on, this, on there. Exactly. How are we using PowerPoint presentations? What are we putting on there? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want them to write something down, and so if I put it in bullet point, yay! They're going to, and I know that, and I'm happy with that. But at the same time, I don't want to lose their attention. So, this is so true for me. Is this true for you guys? Yes, yes absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, crazy. All right, next slide. A little too much text on one slide. A little too much text on one slide, but not... Uncommon. But recognize that I now have to pull you back to me because you're now focused on all of the text that's on the screen. Way too much text. Very wordy. Here's our, here's our answer. Write short phrases rather than long ones. Okay. And here's a good rule of thumb. I liked this one. You can write this equation down for yourself. 40 words or less six lines or less and this one I don't know about six to seven words per line that should be your new PowerPoint mantra 40 words or less in total six lines or less, six to seven words per line.
like I said, being brief is important. Especially with attention spans these days and people. Being brief is important. So the more time students spend transcribing information from the PowerPoint, the less attention they're likely to give to anything the instructor says, like I just said before. Mm. This can seriously frustrate students who feel they have to choose between focusing between two things at once. Okay? Don't make your students choose between focusing on you or focusing on what you're saying. All right, what's wrong with this slide? What's right? What's um, right? What are you trying to point out to us? You've well, compared to the other slides, what is this slide? No, no, sorry, that's fine. Oh, yeah, what are you trying to do? Exactly. Exactly. They want us to read the history, I mean, history. obviously all of it, but... And what the heck has it got to do with anything? It's no, a this man. History. I know that. <laughs> but... Okay, this is way too busy of a slide. I put three different slides all in one to create this slide. So, you want to limit each slide to one thought, one idea, one concept, no more than one. One, 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 one slide, one thought, one concept, one idea. Here's a challenging quote by a person named Nancy Durante who wrote a book called Slideology. It is laziness on the presenter's part to put everything on one slide. It is very true. It is laziness on the presenter's part to put everything on one slide. Don't do it. Yes. Hans Hoffman, who's a German painter, said the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. It takes more to be simple. Trust me. Use a little self-restraint, though. We, we need it. So this includes even keeping the background pretty simple. See if slide is a perfect example of an unsimplified background. What? With the lizards everywhere. <laughs> what? All boiled down the lizards. <laughs> now this, this woman, Nancy, she also said this. Nancy Dronte. Visible elements of the slide often receive the most focus, but you need to pay equal attention to how much space you leave open. It's okay to have clear space. Clutter is a failure of design. <laughs> Clutter is a failure of design. Yeah. It's challenging because people think, I'm going to make this slideshow representation my whole presentation, and because of that, I'm just going to throw everything in there. I'm going to wow them with all of this stuff. No, that's being lazy. That's not designing something. It's not good. So keep your charts, keep your diagrams, keep everything as simple as you can. Do you think that relates to, to teaching, like how you guys say with teaching it's harder to teach a shorter amount and in a more effective way? And with slideshows, I feel like it's the same. Like it's easy to get a whole bunch of clutter information, but to actually make it effective it takes more time and more effort. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I totally think that. To know right. anything well, right. you need to be able to be able to simplify it. Right. And once you know it well, then you can simplify it. Mm. It applies in so many areas of life. Look at you teaching and everything. Okay, the next one was definitely not as good as one of the ones you guys did, but that's a great one. Here it comes. <laughs> I think that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I, think that's really good. I know. I don't know how to flip it all around and do all that stuff too. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <sighs> well, regardless, animation is important. Is important, and I also kind of hate it. Um, <laughs> Here's the thing, okay, there's a difference between animation and functional animation. Animation has been given to you as a tool to help highlight things, to point out certain parts of the slide that you want to point out. It's been given to emphasize, but people take it, and like we saw earlier, they flip whole texts and do circly circles with them. They have like tornadoes coming in. I mean, it's just weird. It's distracting. No one's ever going to be paying attention to you when that's going on on the screen behind you. And it's not the point of the function. PowerPoint wasn't created for that. So this includes transitions. Animation is what you kind of do on the screen. Transitions is how one slide transitions to the next. You can add some kind of fade in with that too. I read that that's really soothing and gentle to the eyes, to your audience, if you have just a little bit, mm -hmm. instead of super stark contrast between the two. Yes. 
And part of animations and such is you can add video to your text.